Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes Bend your knees and your elbows And look and see If everybody is doing it too Just like you Stop popping up and down with your arms to the side Then flap them up and down like a butterfly And look and see if everybody is doing it too Just like you Oh, we seem to have lost Bex. Uh, sorry, we seem to have lost Melissa. There she is. After you, Melissa, we're live. Hey, guys. How are you all doing? Um, I want to say a very warm welcome to the final event of Barnes Children's Literature Festival 2020 at home. My name is Melissa, um, and I'm calling in all the way from Amsterdam. I've been volunteering for this festival since 2018, and as Harry Potter nerd, I am very, very excited to be able to introduce to you guys the BAFTA award-winning screen and playwright, Jack Thorne, who's brought some of my favorite books to screen and theater, including Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials, and the soon-to-be-released uh, Secret Garden. He will be interviewed by the wonderful Bex Lindsay from uh, Fun Kids Radio. Now, don't forget, please keep your questions coming because later on, we'll be answering as many as we can. For now, please enjoy. Hey, Jack. Hey, Bax. Right. Over to you guys. Hi. Hiya. Hi. Uh, so as that lovely introduction just said, my name is Bex. I'm a presenter on Fun Kids Radio and I'm joined by incredible writer Jack Thorne. Hey, Jack. Hello, how are you doing? So good. Um, uh, so good to talk to you, man. And I think we're the finale of the festival, so quite a big deal. No awesome. pressure. <laughs> uh, so I guess there are so many people who want to chat to you and find out loads of stuff. So I've been doing lots of research on you. And the first thing I noticed is you're so busy. Are you not exhausted like all of the time? I'm exhausted at the moment, but that's because we're doing what everyone else is doing, which is homeschool. And, uh, and that's uh, been tough. And my wife's been ill for part of it, so it's been really tough. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's calming down now, I suppose, a little. We're getting Just, used to it. Yeah, no, I guess I guess everyone's going through the same thing. Um, so you are, I mean, just reading through your CV is incredible. And as a lot of people watching might know, you're uh, most well known, I guess, for adapting some incredible uh, plays and, and TV shows. So you've got J.K. Rowling's uh, The Cursed Child, which you, you wrote. You've got The Secret Garden, which is on the way very soon. There's yeah. Philip Hull, uh his dark materials. That's quite a lot of stuff. Uh, where do you even begin when you have a work in front of you that you have to adapt? Uh, well, Cursed Child was a bit different because we didn't know the story. So we were all working together on the story. Um, when it's a book, um, as with um, His Dark Materials and with Secret Garden, with Wanda and with a few other things, um, uh, you try and find out what you think is the absolute core of it, the soul of it. You read it a lot of times and then you make a decision and then that decision stays in your head and in your heart all the time when you're adapting. So for um, His Dark Materials, it was um, greatness versus goodness. So I was... Uh, obsessed with the idea that Philip chose Lyra to follow rather than Azrael. Azrael is doing the classic heroic things. He's fighting the big wars. Um, Lyra isn't. Lyra is stumbling through the world. But because of the decisions she makes, which are driven not by her own ego, not by her own sense of I need to be important, but rather by I want to do the right thing, I want to be a good person, um, the many worlds are saved. So that was something that I just sort of kept in my head all the time when adapting. Try and be as faithful as possible. Try and tell 
you know, the story as Philip would want it told, um, uh, but always keep that soul in your heart. I read somewhere that you said with uh, His Dark Materials and Philip Pullman, uh, you are faithful to the books, you serve the books, and with J.K. Rowling, you serve the characters. What does that mean? Oh, I can't remember saying that. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a weird, it was a weird one because obviously everyone knows Harry. Everyone loves Harry. Everyone loves Hermione. Everyone loves Ron. Um, people, uh, and everyone loves Ginny. Um, people were getting to know Albus and Scorpius. Um, and uh, there were lots and lots of clues in that final chapter about who those two might turn out to be. Um, but, uh, so I was trying to be loyal to Harry's history, loyal to all their histories, but finding a new way with these new characters at the same time. I'm making decisions as to who Harry is, but luckily the person I got to talk to about who Harry is at that point um, was J.K. Rowling. So that made it a lot easier. Yeah, that kind of helps a little bit, doesn't it? If you're talking yeah. to the person who created yeah, I can see that. Um, now I'm guessing yeah. we've got loads of Harry Potter fans who are watching uh, and probably have a million questions. Uh, did you have to go and reread all of the books, rewatch all of the films to, to really get back in the zone? Yeah, I, I described it as doing um, a PhD. So, you know, you, you do a degree and then after your degree, you do a PhD, you do what would give you a doctorate. Um, and so I described it as doing a PhD in Harry Potter, which was basically just eat them. I tried to eat them uh, and tried to remember as much as possible. Um, I'm still frightened to this day of someone challenging me to a Harry Potter quiz because um, I'm 41 and uh, things have left my brain now. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there was a time when I'd have done very well on a quiz. Oh, man, you would have been my first choice. I would be like, yes, I want Jack here in the quiz. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, man, you're, you're off the list, immediately off the list. What was it like then with J.K. Rowling? Did you have to kind of, did you go to a house and chat to her? Did you say, I think Harry would be doing this? And she'd be like, no, not, 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 not today. Uh, it was it was quite similar to that. We did go to her house. Um, she's got a beautiful, I called it a writing hut in an interview, and um, John Tiffany, who's my um, uh, um, uh, collaborator, uh, John and I have worked together for years, and, and, the, and the story is by John, I and uh, John, me and um, and J.K. Rowling, um, mm -hmm. and I described it as a writing hut uh, in an interview once, and John was like, "It's not really a hut, is it? It's kind of rather more glamorous than a hut. It's a really nice little writing room in the in, uh, uh, at the end of her garden." And we went there and we talked. Um, and her um, and her husband bought us sandwiches from Prep uh, to uh, you know halfway through the day. Um, uh, it was um, it was. Uh, really amazing and yeah it was a lot of um, what about this what about that um, have you thought about this um, and it was a lot of just open talking about what it was like being a kid and uh, you know one of the key things for me was I hadn't really enjoyed school um, and I thought it would be interesting to tell a story about people that didn't love being at Hogwarts and um and joe had also not particularly loved being at school either and um and so uh and had had trouble with bullying and not necessarily fitting in with the other kids and so she was that that was one of our first conversations and it was kind of a key conversation that you know um everyone you know everyone has different journeys through their education everyone has different journeys through their social life and um and let's tell a story about two kids who don't love Hogwarts and what that mm -hmm. would be like for them. Because I, I did read somewhere that you like the stories where the characters are kind of outsiders or a bit uh, different. Uh, is that something that attracts you to a story? Yeah, it's also because that's the only thing I can write because I'm an odd, you know, person who is an outsider who, you know what I mean, that, you know, who doesn't, you know, I spent my entire time at school going, I can see what they're doing. And I understand how that makes everyone like them. I just can't quite do it the way that they're doing it, you know. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it, it, you know, but, you know, uh, it turned out all right in the end for me. You know, uh, it, life's a strange thing, you know. Uh, I, this is very not important to anybody else, but do you remember what sandwiches you had? Because that to me is, I want to know what sandwiches you and JK were like ch chowing down over. <laughs> Uh, I think you know. You know what they've got. They've got. They've got money. 
and um, I think I think he bought quite a, a, a large selection of sandwiches and um, uh, too many for us to eat. But then she did say that she would find a home for the stuff that we didn't eat afterwards. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were taken care of, as were you. That's good. That's all I wanted to know. That's yeah, fine. Exactly. That's all I yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, do you feel like when you're adapting stuff, do you have to stay faithful? Or do you can you add little bits in? Or do you feel a bit weird about taking things out again? Uh, so adapting. So here's the materials, which is the thing that's um, closest in my head, because I'm currently working on series three. Um, the, thing, the thing that I had that went against me was I couldn't allow the audience inside characters heads so philip does a lot of um people talking about um things to themselves um and not just to their demons to themselves yeah. so lyra for instance talks about roger an awful lot but she doesn't actually spend that much time with roger um and roger is possibly the most important character for her in terms of driving her journey on. I'm not going to give spoilers as to what she does, but <laughs> Roger is a lot of her motivation for the decisions she makes. So making sure that Roger was um, uh, an absolute central part of it and wasn't just uh, you know, a history in her head was, was difficult. But I've got a key advantage, which is I've got actors' faces. So what Philip doesn't have is the way that um, Ruth Wilson smiles. It, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? He can describe all these things, but a face immediately tells you a thousand things. And um, and so I had Lewin Lloyd um, uh, playing Roger and telling us an awful lot through his face. I had the two of them touching and playing and being funny together. Um, uh, so, you know, there's, uh, so that means that my adaptation by necessity is very different from Phillips because I can't get inside the heads, but I can um, have them uh, having a, uh, uh, you know, ha I can have those faces doing, doing a lot of work for me. So a lot of what I was doing when I was adding in scenes was adding in moments that were uh, uh, silent moments for the actors moments where we were given access to them. So for instance, in episode two of His Star Materials, I had a really key scene that was just Mrs. Coulter sitting by the bath. And after she's given Lyra a bath, that was absolutely crucial because you saw, or you started to think about what Lyra meant to Mrs. Coulter. So do you find it easy then to know the actors in your head and then you can write around it? No, I, I don't. I never know the actors when I'm writing. I never know who the actors are, but I know that I will have faces and I trust that they'll be extraordinary. Sometimes you get very lucky and the actors you have are beyond extraordinary. And then, you know, and then lots of other stuff gets added that you're not even thinking of inside your head. Um, uh, but, you know, there's there's lots of, you know, there's there's lots of interesting things that happen uh, on a set and lots of interesting things that get changed as a result of what the actor brings to the party. I was going to say, have you changed anything from seeing it on TV? Are you like, well, that didn't work with that person, that person will be better here, or that saying that thing in that way? Or do you just say, no, we have to be faithful as possible? No, 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 absolutely. You're constantly adapting to the performance you're given. And that's the best thing about giving, being given an opportunity to write a series two and then a series three, is that you're thriving off what you've learned from uh, series one, you're, you're constantly delving in and, oh, yeah. and getting new nuggets of information. Uh, I did a show called Skins many years ago that was about um, teenagers growing up in Bristol. And um, series one, um, we knew a lot about who we wanted these characters to be, but when we were writing series two, it was so exciting to write it because we knew exactly what the actors were going to give us. And the mm -hmm. actors have brought these characters to life and they transformed them um, by their performances. Now I've got to say, I mean, you're working with some really big, even like skins, like you mentioned, is a big kind of brand. It's a big thing. Um, yeah. Do you feel the pressure when you're working with these big, well-known uh, kind of worlds? Cause I did read some, yeah, somebody said you are the man who was adapting your childhood. How, does that make you feel a little bit scared? Um, yeah, totally, 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 and uh, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, never that nice, um, uh, but it's also extraordinary. You know that you're. It's the most exciting thing in the world, and it's the scariest thing in the world. Yeah, um, you know, uh, being given the opportunity to sit down and work with J.K. Rowling 
is you know a gift from someone up above um uh similarly working with philip pullman you know um and sometimes you have um enormous sense of responsibility and sometimes the responsibility is slightly less so with the secret garden the secret garden's been done a number of times so you don't feel quite the same sort of like she she's she's had the story told um yeah. so now it's what what take you're giving whereas with his dark materials this should be the definitive take this should be the definitive telling of this story and so the the pressure on you is enormous to to get that telling right have you ever read something you're adapting and seen like a massive plot hole in it or something wrong and you're like oh this is awkward i'm gonna have to fix this or all the time Oh. all the time because uh because uh novelists um it's novel novels take you with you with with the, the you know take the reader with you so you're sort of you sort of disappear inside the book and mm -hmm. they they do jumps and they when they do jumps they don't always consider the the meat in the middle of the sandwich that they've just made um whereas television you sort of get your flaws exposed you know that, that if you haven't answered all those questions um but that's really exciting you know i got to uh, i got to sit down with philip pullman and go so what was asriel doing here what was asriel doing here what was asriel doing here you know and that's yeah. amazing you know you know yeah yeah that must Keith be ultimate like going into it as a as a fan you must be like oh my goodness i can find out anything i want to this this is the dream surely yeah yeah sometimes sometimes they go i'm not telling you that but um <laughs> but but uh but you know yeah no it's amazing yeah and Best do you job keep, in the world. i bet do you keep in touch with them as well do they keep a check in are they like uh jack what are you doing with my characters today or do they just leave you to it um oh they're always uh, involved in the whole process from beginning to end um uh so yeah no philip i'm still in you know contact with um uh and joe um you know curse child is um you know it's a it's been written but every now and again you know when we did it we did it in australia recently there were a few things we wanted to change we we made sure we ran it past joe um before we um you know before we before we executed it and how did it feel when you saw it on stage for the first time because that must have been just such an epic journey getting that whole thing together was it relief was it delight how was it it was strange and the reason why it was strange was because we had two we had two dress rehearsals before we opened and the dress rehearsals went really well they were really really um fun and then um and then the audience came in and i every audience. time i'd done anything there was a sort of gasp and like there were rounds of applause and it just like everyone everyone who was there that night described it like a rock concert people were seeing the story for the very first time and they were it was just thrilling it was really really like one of the best nights of my life um uh and then and then slowly people knew the story before they came in and the things slightly changed and that's why we tried to if at all possible keep it so that no one knew what they were walking into um uh because that just it, it's just the best way of watching the play um uh but um yeah no so it was it was it was amazing and it was ridiculous and it was um you know brilliant i have to ask do you know what hogwarts house you're in have you ever done the sorting hat quiz i'm claw i'm ravenclaw uh Ravenclaw's and i knew that before i did the I, I knew that before i did the quiz too uh, but they made me do the quiz because we were doing a house competition during the rehearsal process and they said everyone had to do the quiz and I was like I'm not doing the quiz I'm Ravenclaw and if that comes back and tells me I'm not in Ravenclaw then I'm gonna be really angry about it um, <laughs> and they said no you have to do it and then I did the quiz and it, it, it um, came back Ravenclaw I've also told um, uh, JK Rowling that I believe um, the sorting hat would have given her a choice between Ravenclaw and and uh, Gryffindor um and that she decided on Gryffindor but there is some Ravenclaw inside her I and a, quite a, a big proportion of Ravenclaw inside her I think um but she she doesn't you know she doesn't pass comment on such things but I I did I did make a strong case to her yeah I can I can understand that's a good point of view as well I've got to say I I'm a Hufflepuff and I'm proud of it I I just awesome. yeah it's a it's yeah it's an amazing world to be part of do you feel like you you own a little bit of it now when you see it out in the world you're like oh yeah i know harry really well 
no, no. It's take your Allen's <laughs> thing. I'm like, I'm really lucky to have worked on a tiny bit of it. Um, mm -hmm. Sonia Friedman, our producer, is is Hufflepuff. Um, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. She's oh, the, company, one of the key then. architects of the whole show, and she's a Hufflepuff. Wow, I feel, I feel, um, that's, that's pretty good. I'll, I'll take that. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My dream. niece is also Hufflepuff, but you know, yeah, and she is also awesome, but you don't know who she is. Well, I'll, I'll just take it. I'll just take it for granted. That seems fine. That seems awesome. legit. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that awesome. seems fair. So what kind of stories um, were you interested in when you were a child? What did you watch? What did what made your heart kind of kaboom? Um, I loved uh, Susan Cooper. Um, I loved uh, So the Dark is Rising, um, which are sort of, um, which are the stories about, they're, they're sort of slightly gothic, pagany stories, but again, about um, a, a kid coming of age, a kid realising what his destiny is to be. Um, I also loved Narnia. Um, I, I never really got into comics. Um, I it was always fantasy for me, and 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 straight fiction. But I like fantasy took me somewhere, and I you know yeah. And and my um my favorite film of all time is ET, and I've got um be good uh, tattooed on my uh, wrist, and my son is called Elliot. So um uh you know the the, the obsession has stayed with me. Very much on brand for that one then. I also I also yeah. read that you used to be a big fan of Neighbours. Is that right? I I, I watched a lot of Neighbours. I, I don't know, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there's a certain generation of people. I'm 41, so there's a certain generation of people who were sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, teenagers in the early 90s for whom uh, Neighbours is like, they can sing every word of the theme song uh, backwards, uh, you know, um, uh, but yeah, that, that's, uh, that, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't keep up with it anymore, but, um, uh, but we had, we had one of the neighbours cast in, um, in Harry Potter and that was, that was very cool. I'm not, I'm not trying to catch you out on that, by the way, I just was genuinely interested. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I watched a lot of TV. I watched way too much TV as a kid. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I would watch like five hours a night. So um, I'm an example for no one. <laughs> but were you watching it thinking, I want to tell stories one day, I'm, I'm kind of absorbing everything? Or, uh, or did you no. not even think that at the time? No, I just really liked telly. No, I wasn't, no, I wasn't thinking anything really. I was just kind of going, this is really good. Can't wait to see what happens next. But that's surely is formative for you then. Cause I guess it means that yeah. you're, you have this love of like TV, theater. Uh, yeah, you're, you're clearly, yeah, you've absorbed yeah. it all. Yeah, absolutely. I still to this to this day. That's that's me. I love I love stories, and I've always loved stories, and I love not knowing what's going to happen next. And there's something about long form stories when you're watching EastEnders and you remember what Phil Mitchell said in 1998, and um, and you're reflecting on it on the current scripts in 2020. You know that 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 um, there's there's something about there's something about stories and characters that just I don't know it's it's why it's the best job in the world because I think empathy can change the world and um and I certainly was changed by my telly watching experience and um and I that's what I want to do I want to I want to you know change a few minds every now and again I have noticed that a lot of your uh, theatre work and some of your TV work is a bit more my maybe real life maybe more gritty uh, and then you've yeah. also got this fantasy side to yourself as well with, you know, his dark materials and Harry Potter. Is there something you prefer or do you really like being able to do both? I really like being able to do both. But yes, no, uh, it's a weird old career. It doesn't make sense to anyone, but, you know, it makes sense to me. No, it's I totally get it. It's it's fantastic because um, especially your theatre work as well. Obviously, you've done lots of stuff uh, for the National, the Royal Court, lots of other bits uh, for them as well. Do you would you ever want to see some of that put on TV one day? Would you be happy to adapt it a bit like James Graham and Quiz? No, I don't. I'm not as clever as James Graham. Uh, my my plays are like meant to be plays. I think that they're not they're not really adaptable in the same way that his are. But um, yeah, no, uh, it's it, it's amazing. I've it, it, you know I, there's. There's a whole group of us that sort of came of age at the same time, and James is one of them that you know I knew him 15 years ago, and uh, it's really exciting seeing what he's doing now and and seeing him on Question Time and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's going, no, you're not supposed to be on Question Time. 
but then he says stuff and it's like you're amazing look at all that beautiful things you're saying would you ever collaborate with him maybe you two could make like a super play <laughs> i think it would be a super awful play but um <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i've always i um the, the national did something the other day about who you'd want to be locked down with right. and um and there was a few people who said me and james and I said, you, you, none of you have any idea of how boring the pair of us are, <laughs> that we just sit in the corner talking about politics and you'd be insanely bored. Um, you, you find a lot of people much more interesting than us to talk to. I don't know. I think you're doing yourself down there. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it's, you know, you never know. But with, with, uh, with writing new work, when you've got stuff, how do, when you get a project, how do you know this will work better as a film, this will be a TV show, this will be a play? Or do you just, are you told automatically what it should be have you ever got something and given free reign no it, yeah that you generally that, that that's i'm trying to self-generate a bit more but um generally you're you're um you know so when i was approached by his dumb materials it was his dumb materials the tv show when i was right. approached by secret garden it was secret garden the film you know yeah. wonder the film you know that you don't you don't get that choice um mm. there's there's sometimes i come up with ideas and then it's a matter of deciding what i do with them um and then it just is about what form suits it best, how quickly you can tell the story, um, how how much you think you can sit in it, and and um, and whether it would be best exploring it on stage where you've got an audience sort of in a very different situation to television where you've sort of just got to keep them with you in, in a slightly different way. So you mentioned there when you get an idea, you have to sit in it a little bit. Is there maybe a little a, a, a young adult fiction book or a kid's book kind of lurking in there? Would you ever fancy writing a bit of a long form book? I, 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 my first TV show was a show called The Fades and, um, and that was young adult. Um, and I still have dreams of going back to that and doing that a bit more. Okay, well that was a slightly vague answer there. That was, I feel like you maybe have something bubbling under the surface. There's a, I, I just, the, 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 the fades is the one that, you know, I, you know, that was like, Philip, like, is right when he talks about fantasy, he's like, you need that central idea. I had a really good central idea for the fades. I've not come up with a good central idea since, and that was <laughs> 12 years ago. But, um, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that was the one for me. And so if I can find a way of doing it again, I'll, I'll, I'll try and do it again. Uh, now, a lot of people watching, I'm sure, will be writing at home. They're off school at the moment, a lot of people. Lots of time to do some bits, make some new projects. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to write at the moment? The, the two pieces of advice. One, uh, finish it. And I think that's the <laughs> biggest piece of advice. And that's the advice that all writers will tell you, which is it is so easy to throw something away. It's so easy to go, oh, uh, that doesn't work. I'm just going to start again on something else. Finish it save the idea you've got then work on that as your next project um and then the second piece of advice is find a reader and that reader can be a brother a sister it can be a friend don't make it all about um you know that the, oh i need to get it in front of such and such person's face in order for myself to be legitimate um i had um i did a course at the royal court royal court young writers program and there was another young writer I met in that scheme who's now a fabulous writer. She's called Laura Wade. And um, I showed her everything that I wrote and she showed me everything I wrote, uh, she wrote. And, um, and honestly, that was the best education I had because that thing of just kind of looking at stuff, talking about stuff, that's the best, that's, that's the only thing you need as a writer, someone to talk to about it. Someone to share it with and kind of bounce ideas off, I guess it's quite helpful. It Exactly. And someone's go, I didn't understand this. Explain this to me. What's this? How does this work? What's this piece of string? You know, like, you know, what, what's at the end of this piece of string? You know, just those basic questions about who these people are, you know, and if you and, if, and someone aren't answering those questions for you asking and then answering those questions is just the, the best thing. Now, when did you know that you'd, you'd become like, do you, do you feel successful? Did you, did you have a certain job where you're like, this is it, I've made it now? Or do you always feel like you're kind of like working, working, working? Yeah, you're always trying to prove yourself and it's and the thing about writing is it's always about what you're doing next you know that you know so it's always like that was good i quite like that bit um or that was awful why did i do that um uh and then it's what's next what's next what am i doing next 
um, and how can I make it better? How can I be a better writer? How can I be better than I am? You know, I'm, uh, you know, not not that interested in comparing myself to other people. Um, uh, but I I want to make stuff that lasts um, because I want to have contributed to this world. Mm -hmm. You know, the world's in a mess. And um, and I want to be someone that helps make it better if I can. And I'm still trying to write something that does that. You know, that's that's my aim. You know. Now, speaking of things that are coming up next, you're still incredibly busy. You've got uh, obviously the Secret Garden is coming out in August, I believe. And you've got is it a, a yeah Enola Holmes? It's going to be on Netflix very soon. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what Secret Garden's doing in terms of when we're going to be able to release it. I don't know. I, I don't know when they've got a firm date for that yet. It's all about what happens with this. You know, we're supposed to. We were supposed to open at Easter, so who knows? Um, uh, and yeah, but Nola Holmes, yeah, it's coming on Netflix in 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 August, and uh, it's really fun. It's a really fun film. It's about Sherlock Holmes's little sister, and uh, and um, it's uh, it's a Nancy Springer book, uh, and. Um, it's be, it's such fun making it and it's so um you know we've tried to make it quite devious and uh and we've got the most incredible cast you know um uh millie bobby brown playing enola um uh helena bottom carter playing her mum eudoria um uh you know just like these incredible incredible people and uh and i hope people like it Harry Bradbeer, who's directed it, directed all of Fleabag, and he's he's brilliant. Yeah, I had a little look at the uh, what was going on with that, and it does look incredible. Like that is something to look forward to, definitely. Oh well, I hope you like it. I really hope you like it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. Um, and also, <laughs> is there one bit in it that we should look out for that you're very excited about people seeing? Oh. Uh, uh... <laughs> the. Oh, that's a hard question. Because it's also great, right? There's, 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 there's a fight sequence in the middle, um, which, um, in which you see Hella and Millie having a fight, intercut with Millie fighting someone else, and because um, Helena's training her how to be a fighter, but the way that Helena trains her is um, quite fierce, um, uh, and that that's a really fun sequence. Okay, that's something to look out for then. I feel like we've got a little uh, little extra Easter egg there. That's excellent. Uh, so <laughs> before we get on to everybody's questions, because I know lots of people have been dropping questions, and if you're one of them, keep going, add more questions into the box. Um, whenever I chat to authors on Fun Kids, I always have a little quick fire round of questions to do with them. Oh, uh, wow. So I thought I'd do that with you now, if that's okay. That's brilliant, yes, please. Okay, cool. Uh, no pressure, don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, so first up, books or Kindles? Books. Every writer says that. I don't even know why I ask it anymore. <laughs> Heroes or villains? Uh, uh, villains, maybe, but I also like heroes, but heroes where they're not perfectly heroic. Okay. Uh, this is quite hard. Uh, Pullman or rolling? <laughs> uh, pass. Probably, probably for the best. Film adaptation or TV adaptation? I love both. I also love writing for radio. Uh, you know, anything that will allow me to write, I love doing. Okay. Uh, Richard Herring or Frank Skinner? Frank Skinner's my brother-in-law. So, uh, oh, Frank Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> I just read that you were a fan of both of their podcasts. I thought I'd just yeah. see where you're at with that. <laughs> good, good to know. Okay. Uh, writing or reading? Uh, reading. Okay. That's always quite hard. I love writing, but I, reading is the best. Okay. Hogwarts or Narnia? Hogwarts. Probably, yeah. Uh, Royal Court or National Theatre? Royal Court. I, I love the National, but Royal Court's amazing. I guess it's where you started. It's got your heart. Yeah. Uh, laptop or write by hand? I do both. Um, and uh, I don't have the best back for a laptop anymore. So I write on a, on a static computer mostly. And uh, and that's good on an iMac, you know. Okay, uh, Peppa Pig or Hey Dougie? Hey Dougie. Oh, hey Dougie. Special. Okay. Yeah. Hey Dougie's. Hey Dougie's naughty. I love Peppa, 
but Hey Dougie's like really naughty and I love how naughty it is. I love how the, the games it plays. That's the only answer you've given so far where I felt like you felt embarrassed, or not a bit cheeky for saying it, like we're like, oh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but, uh, do you write nine to five or do you write when you fancy? Um, uh, I write nine to um, uh, half six, seven. And then I, when I put Elliot down, um, but um, I also write after I put him down sometimes. So um, I just try and write as much as I can whilst also trying to be a good dad. Great answer. Uh, Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh. Uh, really? We're going through a real Winnie the Pooh phase at the moment. We're reading all the stuff and we're watching all the films and uh, yeah, we love Winnie the Pooh. Okay, and finally, this is the big one. This is the one I will judge you for, so be careful here. Okay, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Cheese and onion. Oh, no! Sorry. <laughs> you know what, you get but, lovely answers for the rest. It's fine. But smoky bacon, if I'm given a choice of everything. Okay, the hidden third option. You've got smoky bacon. All right, okay. Yeah. You've mixed up a little bit there. Uh, so <laughs> I guess we need to ask you lots of questions from lots of people who are watching right now. I know we've had loads of people watching, so thank you so much to everybody who's been in touch. Awesome. Um, you, uh, you have a lot of people obviously wanting to know about his dark materials, about Harry Potter. Um, we also had Sophie, age nine, who says, what inspired you to become a playwright? Um, uh, it, it happened by accident, Sophie, in that um, I was, um, I, I wanted to direct I, I wanted to act actually, and then I discovered that I wasn't a great actor, and so I decided I wanted to direct, but it costs a lot of money to put on a play um, if you're paying for the rights for a play. It costs £65 a night, and so I decided to write one as a way of um, getting around that, and then discovered that the part I really liked was writing the play. So it all happened by accident. You were basically getting into it to save money then? Yeah, exactly, 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 and then fell in love. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, we had Becca, who says, what do you prefer to write, uh, screen stuff or play stuff? I like both. I find screen stuff easier to write than stuff. Um, stage stuff tends to leave me in a bit of a tangle. And I think it's because when I was growing up, I watched a lot of TV and a lot of films and I didn't watch that much theatre. And so I'm still sort of learning about theatre in a way that I feel like I have a better understanding of, of TV and film. But I love writing for them all. OK. Uh, Kristen says, if you had to be one character from fiction, who would it be? Hard. That's really hard. Yeah. That's really hard. Um, Vaya from from um, from Wonder. I think she's wonderful. She makes me. It, she inspires me because she's so honest about who she is. Is that from the the books that you adapted for film, R. J. Palacios book? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It's Augie's older sister. Right. And is there is there a book that you are still desperate to adapt? You wish somebody would ask you to adapt. There's lots. The one that I really want to do, uh, but but someone else is doing, and I've wanted to do for a very long time, is Lord of the Flies. Yeah, I can see you doing very well with that. Just just steal it from them. They'll be fine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, I love that book, and uh, yeah, and I, I got close to uh, to doing it for TV a few years ago, and then it all sort of fell apart because of... Oh lawyers and um and uh and uh it's the one that got away yeah i bet that would be yeah that would be very good to uh to get your claws on i imagine um antonio yes. says how much time do you spend on set not as much as i should do antonia uh i um i should be there more i think i i i'm very shy and i find people very difficult and so i tend to avoid social situations and I should be braver, and I have, um, and I'm trying to learn how to do that at the moment. If I were you, I'd just be there for the sandwiches, as you can tell. There's a theme with me. I'd be there. <laughs> to try and grab yeah, yeah. The food a, lot, a lot of sort of a lot of sort of many crisps too on set. Yeah, yeah. All left over. Uh, we've had Harry and Jane both asking, uh, "When is the next His Dark Materials coming out?" 
I think we've said. Uh, I think we've said November. Um, I could be wrong. And if I've announced something that I shouldn't have announced, then I'm really, really sorry. Um, I, I don't know. It's not up to me. It's not up to me when it goes on. But I think we're trying to do it by the end of the year. Okay. Well, even if that's not meant to be released, that's a little exclusive for the Barnes uh, Festival. Yeah. So that's fine for me. Makes me look good for getting that from you. So yeah, Perfect. I'll be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had Polly, who says, how did you come up with the personality of the characters in The Cursed Child? Um, <laughs> Scorpius I wrote myself, uh, but a lot nicer than me. Um, uh, um, uh, um, you know, the sort of uh, person that finds a lot of joy in nerddom. Um, and it was shameless, and everyone that read it was like, oh, you've just written yourself there. Uh, but um, I sort of wanted to go to Hogwarts, so um, that was the best way of doing it. Um, Albus, I tried to write someone that's... Um, uh, all the clues as to who Albus was felt like was in that little scene at the end of the last book, in what? terms of his worries about the, his worries about the school, um, those names and what those names meant and the heaviness of those names upon him and his fear that he would be sorted in Slytherin and so it was sort of using those clues and realizing that Harry had a child that wasn't going to be as comfortable in Hogwarts as his other kids and and um and 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 working out from that do you find the fan bases are different for different things you do, and especially, I guess, for His Dark Materials and Harry Potter? Yes. Um, uh, but I wouldn't be able to tell you how they're different. Um, but yes, they are. They are. There's. Um, it's, yeah, it's different. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't actually know how to, to say how different they are, but they do feel different. Okay. Uh, Zoe says, what's the best part of your job? The blank page. I love that moment when it's just you alone in your room and it's either you're either on your computer or you're sitting with your notepad and um, and you're starting to starting to create something. It's the best feeling in the world, I think. That's interesting because a lot of authors would definitely say the opposite. They'd be like, no, if I see the blank page, it haunts me. Yeah, it does. It does. And it's scary. Uh, um, but that moment where you go, oh, that's who that person is, is just, that's what that's what I live for. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we also had from Zoe a question, which is, it could have gone in my quickfire round. Uh, Hermione or Lyra? Pass. That's a very difficult question. Yeah, it's hard. I think they're, I think they're both extraordinary. They're, they're both very different. Um, they wouldn't have much in common uh, uh, if they if they hung out together, but they might be friends. I think uh, you know Lyra is not such a fan of the library. Um, <laughs> uh, you know that she's just she wants to be on the back of an armored bear charging across the landscape. Hermione wants to understand, wants to delve into things, wants to you know read and discover. So, um, but, I, but I think they might be friends. Um, and if they were friends, I definitely would want to hang out with them. I would want to read you putting those two together. That would be the ultimate like, fan fiction. <laughs> I'd, I'd be on board with that. Yeah, all right. Okay, you, you write to Philip and, and, and Joe and say <laughs> that, you know, that you want the rights to those stories to, to put those two characters together and, and I'll be your man. Can you imagine? I don't think I'd afford that in a million years, but the dream is there. The dream of that would be amazing. Um, we had uh, Rose who said, what is your favourite piece of writing? So I'm going to extend this to, uh, what's your favourite piece that you've written and what's your favourite piece of somebody else's? My favourite piece of someone else's is um, a playwright called Anton Chekhov wrote a play called Three Sisters, which I think is magnificent. And if I could have written anything in the world, that's what I'd have written. Um, my favorite piece of writing, I hope I haven't written it yet. Um, uh, uh, I really like, I did a TV show called National Treasure that I really like. 
Um, I did. Uh, I, I'm really proud of Cursed Child. I'm really proud of Christmas Carol, which I did. There's a few that I'm, but I, I don't think I've written something that really defines me yet. I'm still trying. That's quite exciting, though, because it means you're still kind of you're climbing that mountain and you're so happy with what you've done so far. But, you know, there's more to come. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'm desperately unhappy with everything I've done, too. But, you know, that there's uh, there's uh, there's there's some stuff where I can sit back now and go, I like that one. That was mm -hmm. good. Not necessarily because of what I did, but 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 I'm I'm really proud to have been part of it. Do you ever look back at stuff a little while later and you're like, oh, that was much better than I gave it credit for? Yes, though not much because I, I haven't still got enough distance yet. There's bits of skins which I, at the time I thought I'd let myself down on where I rewatch down and go, you no, know, that was all right, actually. It holds up still. Um, we had, oh, somebody called Homer Alone, which I love, uh, saying, did JK Rowling write a plan before you wrote The Cursed Child or did you and John decide the events in the story? We all did it together. Um, so Jo had lots of stuff inside her head um, that we then went and shook out of her like a um, money box. Um, and, uh, and we took those coins and then we had some ideas and then we worked on those ideas and then, you know, it all became a great big cauldron of, cauldron of thoughts. And, um, and we all worked together on trying to, you know, uh, and, and trying to make that cauldron into a nice spell. Um, uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was complicated, but I wouldn't, I, I, I now wouldn't be able to tell you which bits of the story came from who. The only bit that I can tell you definitely came from me as Scorpius because, um, um, uh, he's me. So, do you know what I mean? That, you know, <laughs> but that's the only bit where I go, I know exactly where that character came from. The rest of it is like, well, it was a mix of lots of different things. That is pretty good, isn't it? Leaving a little message for your future self, like a part of you will always be in that play because you pretty much are the main character. Yeah, the, the, he's not the main character, but he's one of them. And uh, yeah, no, it's shameless. It's absolutely shameless. He's a lot nicer than me. I just want to say again, he's a lot nicer than me. He's a lot gentler than me and he's a lot kinder than me. But um, he's just got my predilections. <laughs> is there anything when you were writing, it kind of, it nearly made it into the plane at the last minute, it just didn't quite work or a plot or something or like a character who just didn't quite get it into the last last bit of it i'm so worried about giving away stuff that i shouldn't give away yeah. we did have luna in the play at one point and i'm sad we didn't find a way for her to fit um because i really love luna and um uh and there was an idea of how to make her work and it didn't just quite it just didn't quite work Okay, yeah, poor Luna. Uh, we had somebody saying, how do you write captivating dialogue? That is quite a tricky one because do you speak it to yourself as you're writing things or do you just rely on what's going on in your head? I just rely on what's going on in my head, but, um, but then I rely on the people I work with to help me um, if, it's, if it's wrong. But I, uh, like writing dialogue is the, the best bit of the job because when you write dialogue, you surprise yourself. Because when you've got two characters, and I think it's, I think it's what, I, I think I'm sure novelists surprise themselves all the time, but I think that um, uh, dialogue writers, you know, screenwriters, stage uh, playwrights, that that we have more of a propensity to do that because you have two people in a conversation and then suddenly someone says something that you weren't expecting them to say, and it's so exciting when that happens. Yeah, that must be quite an about turn because you just. It's like, like you've said before, bouncing ideas off each other, I guess, and just getting that flash of inspiration. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. So suddenly, some, suddenly Mrs. Coulter says something and you go, why has Mrs. Coulter said that? And then you go back to the book and go, oh, maybe. And then you go, oh, yeah, no. And then you go, oh, right, yeah, no, that works. It all fits together. Uh, and Rishka says, how important do you think books and films are during lockdown? I'm guessing quite important. They, they've been quite important to me. And I, I think they've been quite important to other people. Um, it's been interesting seeing what stuff people want to watch and what stuff people don't want to watch during lockdown. Uh, um, <laughs> and, you know, the, the, there's been a sort of the, the grimmer stuff has not done as well as the lighter yeah. stuff um, uh, because we don't want to we don't want to look at ourselves yet. But then hopefully, um, you know, next year when we're emerging from this, we can start to look at ourselves again and start to question, you know, who we are and, and how we can be better. Do you, what do you think of the future of theatre? Because right now, obviously, it's 
it's just nothing's happening. Are you are you hoping that new things will emerge or are you just a bit worried? I think we're all a bit worried at the moment. It's a really scary time. There are theatres going bankrupt. Um, it's going to be very hard for theatres once we're out of this. And um, uh, because theatre is reliant on a revenue from audiences mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's not coming in. And so there's a lot of theatres who are going to be in, uh, are in a lot of trouble and uh, it's going to require some help from the government and it's whether the government's prepared to give it. Yes, that's true. Uh, Isabel says, now this, I may be the answer, but you maybe will give a different one. Isabel says, if you had the one as cover, emergency cover in the Cursed Child play, who would you pick to go on as? Now, would it be Scorpius or would it be someone else entirely? I'm bald. I've got my <laughs> hair. I can't be a, I can't be a child. Um, uh, um, who would I go on as? I'd have a go at Oh no, that's a spoiler. Well, it's okay, isn't it? Now I think we're out there with. The... I'd have a go at Hagrid. I'm six foot. I'm six foot five. I'd have a go at Hagrid. I love how it took it, how long it took you to get there because you were like, "What do people know already? What's meant to be told?" Yeah, exactly, her? exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, like you said, with with Cursed Child, you've done such a good job. The whole keep the secret thing that must have been. What was the decision to do that? Was that quite a big gamble? It was just that we just we just didn't want people knowing the story before they came in through the doors. Mm -hmm. that, that, that reading plays, you can read plays. I love reading plays. I love reading screenplays. But really, you want to experience them. That's when it's the most exciting. When you walk into a theatre and you don't know what's going to happen, that's really, really exciting. And if you're surrounded by people who also don't know what's going to happen and who are screaming or gasping or or laughing, then it's really, really fun. And we wanted to keep that experience alive for as long as possible. And now, unfortunately, we're at the stage where people do know. And so we're, we've decided it's okay to talk about it. But um, it's, it's still, if you can not know when you walk in seeing the play, that's the best way of experiencing it. But yes, when I play Harry Potter with my, with my um, nephew, I play it with my nephew Buzz, um, uh, I'm Dumble Hagrid. <laughs> uh, so I'm either I'm either Dumbledore or I'm a Hagrid, and uh, and that's uh, you know that's who, who I'd be. I think yes. I love that combination. That yeah, that's great. It's like I was doing my uh, I'm like I said a Hufflepuff, but uh, one of my friends said, "Oh, you're a Hufflepuff with Gry Gryffindor Risings," and I was like, "I don't know whether it works like that, but okay, <laughs> sure, fine." Uh, we had uh, Laura who messaged really early on. She said she wants to write uh, for plays. I think. How do you do the timing and the structure? What do you? How do you work to make the timing and the structure work in a play that's easy for people who are writing them? I guess. Read a lot of plays and okay. just see how they do it. And I tend to try and see. I try tend to try and read stuff that where I feel like someone's been there before, in order so that I can just get a sense of how they did it. And then I try and throw that away and do something totally different. Don't be constrained by being in a theatre. The, um, the first play John Tiffany and I did together um, was a play called Let the Right One In. And, um, and, it's, and I wrote it with someone, I started it with someone running through a forest. And of course you can't have someone running through a forest on stage, but they found a way of doing it and they found a way of representing it and, and, and be free, be free, be unconstrained. Is that you saying to me that you write stuff almost to just trick the director and the production crew to be like, yeah, just deal with that. That's fine. That's fine. Tiny bit, tiny bit. It's fun. That's where that's where the fun happens. You know. Yeah. Uh, we've also we've had so many questions. It is brilliant. Um, we had Kristen who says, if you had to be stuck on an island with three characters, who would you choose? Uh, Lyra because she kept me off the island. Um, not Scorpius, because we'd send each other mad. Mm -hmm. Albus, Albus mainly, maybe, because I think Albus is wonderful, and I think people see him as a dark character, and he's not, he's beautiful, he just, he just is really honest. Um, uh, I'm picking all characters I've written. I should be picking <laughs> other people's characters. Uh, um, uh, Aslan. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, Why not? You might as well. Why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. 
Um, obviously, we've had a lot of Harry Potter fans in the chat, and so they all want to know, uh, what is your favourite Harry Potter book? And also, do you prefer the books or the films? I think it's probably Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I also love Goblet because Goblet was such a huge jumping off point for us in terms of the play. But I think Prisoner is beautiful and I love what it does to Harry. I love how it all links together and I love the, I love the morals at the center of it. I love how it's about not judging. It's about seeing past other people's judgment and it's about being true. I think it's Harry at his best. Um, and I think it's got, you know, I think the introduction of Sirius Black is just one of the best introductions to any character in, in literature. So with, with all of this, we're talking about all of your amazing work and you've got so much still to come out this year. What are you actually working on now? What are you writing at the moment? Series three of his done materials. So we, we're, we're editing series two in order so that it goes on. And then I'm writing series three at the moment for when we start filming next year. Oh my goodness. And that's, that's already in your head. That's already kind of like getting out there, getting good to go. That's madness that it's already back on the treadmill. No, yeah, well, no, we do, we don't stop, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I handed in a draft on Friday. We'll be talking about it on Monday. And how is it working in lockdown at the moment? Is everything happening over Zoom? Yeah, everything's happening over Zoom, which in some ways is quite good, particularly if you're a shy person, uh, particularly as it means that I don't have to travel, which it saves time. Um, uh, and it means I'm getting a lot more time with my family, which is lovely. Uh, but yeah, no, Zoom's, Zoom's strange. And, you know, everyone's seen what my house looks like. It's weird, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know yeah. that yeah. that side of the room is very messy, but this side is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because of this. I know entirely what you mean. Uh, and with, with all of your work out at the moment, is there one thing that you would love everybody watching and listening, and if people are watching back, uh, one thing you would love them to go and check out or read, something that you think everybody will just adore no nothing that ever, everyone will adore hopefully there's something that some of them will quite like um i don't know uh you know uh uh wonder maybe um aeronauts which is a film i did that's on amazon i think that's all right and um and and his time materials please watch his time materials it's on iplayer you know and the new series is out in november apparently <laughs> Apparently, maybe, who knows? <laughs> um, well, this, this has been fantastic. Um, if anybody does want to ask any more questions, I can see people saying, no, please don't end. So that is a good sign, I guess. Uh, but I think that's pretty much all the time we've got for, the, uh, for today's interview with Jack. Unfortunately, it is. Thank you so much, guys, for this wonderful and wonderful interview. It's been fantastic to hear all of the insights. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for asking all the questions. Yeah, there were such some wonderful questions. Um, and with this wonderful and insightful interview, it's bringing us to the finale of Barnes Children's Literature Festival 2020 at home. It's been amazing six days. Um, and thank you all so much for everyone that has joined. Thank you to our authors. Thank you to uh, everyone at home. Thank you to our schools for joining us. Um, thank you to, sorry, did you say? <laughs> thank you to our sponsors, uh, the Barnes Community Association, um, St. Paul's Schools and the University of Roehampton. Um, and an amazing thank you to our Barnes team and our Red Apron Army. Much book love to everyone. And we can't wait to see you all to, at the Barnes Pond next year in June 2021. Thank you all so much, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.